Welcome to another episode of Between Two Kairos. Dun, dun, dun. I'm Dr. Burr. I'm a Cairo. I'm Dr. Israel. I'm a Cairo. And this is Spence, the spine. And Our he, number one spine sore? He's the number one spine sore, yes. And he's between two Kairos. Today's topic is understanding the leg pain you are experiencing. Because what may not be obvious is that, well, you have that leg pain, we know that's obvious, but it may not be a leg problem or coming from your leg. So we'll dive deep into that today. Mm -hmm. We are Reach Rehab and Chiropractic Performance Center in Plymouth, Michigan, outside of Detroit and Ann Arbor, where we provide sports chiropractic, rehabilitation, and massage therapy, where we help you take the guesswork out of healing so you can do more than just relieve pain, you can become mm -hmm. unstoppable. Somewhere around here, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe for future content um, as we'll keep dripping out stuff. And let us know if there's any topics that you guys would like us to discuss. Um, Cause we're scraping the barrel right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, Mitch. Yes. Sorry, Dr. Israel, I apologize. Um, we're gonna cut to the chase. Anyone can experience leg pain, we know that. Correct. But would you please share with us I guess the most common types of leg pain because that's a pretty broad topic. It, it is because okay, the leg... Okay, I got to move this. Yes, yes uh, because when we talk about the leg, I mean, that could be a, several things, right? Muscles, joints, and there's several reasons we could be experiencing pain in the legs. One of them being, you know, from a trauma. If you're in a car accident or unfortunately like a slip and fall or you fall down a set of stairs, um, you know, you can get a direct trauma to either a joint or a bone within the leg and that could cause, you know, pain and other, a myriad of issues. What if you're Nancy Kerrigan and Tanya Harding takes a lead pipe to your knee? Would you experience leg pain? There's a good chance, yes. I know I'm dating myself that reference, but... Who? <laughs> so but yes, yes, that's, that's another, a trauma. That's another example of a trauma. So that might be a more obvious example of a trauma, um, but either way, that's one cause of leg pain that we could be experiencing. Okay, so trauma like a car accident, a yep. slip and fall, something else that's sports in injury, right? It's obvious. Correct. What else is some leg pain? Well, you can have like exercise induced leg pain where, hey, you know, it's still fairly the new year. So if your uptick in activity uh, is out of the ordinary or you have an increase in activity. Maybe or, doing more than what you could think you can handle. Yeah, with, exactly. Too much too soon. You could get, you know, whether hamstring, calf, quad, anywhere in the legs, you can experience pain and tightness, which that would be another cause. Different yeah. than a trauma, but it could still Yeah, so that's more pain. like tightness, post-exercise soreness, something to expect. Nothing that's like, you know, a true injury, something broken, so to say, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. So speaking of which, that's mean then injury. Um, that's another source of leg pain. So like, what are, I guess, some common injuries you'll find with leg pain? Well, whether you're experiencing knee pain while running or, hey, anytime in a sport, say basketball, where you're cutting, you might experience ankle pain to where it's not a trauma that causes it, but you're still experiencing pain while doing certain activities. Okay, so maybe like overloading or a non-contact sports injury. Exactly. You do something or maybe you're, you're doing too much. Well, whether you maybe roll your ankle or sprain it, you can get some pain from that, obvious. Yeah. But maybe like a runner's knee, or that, that's what we call it, like you can be doing more training than your typical, and all of a sudden you develop pain in an area probably due to overloading. Yep, where it could be more of a, a tendon or a ligament issue that could be causing that. Pain. Yeah, repetitive sprain, strain, that type of thing. Okay, yep. cool. And then the last type of leg pain, our most favorite, because we see a lot of it. Yes, most of our leg pain is what we call insidious, or when it just starts out of nowhere. For instance, a common presentation we see is, hey, you know, I'm, whenever I'm sitting at the desk for too long during work, whether depending on our postures and positions, I can start to get some pain into the, the glute or even down the leg. That's another source of leg pain we see commonly that's caused by either postures, positions, and I know we're gonna dive into that in a minute here. Yeah, so for sure. So the big key word with that is sciatica. And um, you know we typically think sciatica like pinched nerve, pain down the leg, numbness, tingling, so on and so forth. But you know you don't necessarily have to have numbness or tingling. You can have just general like dull achy pain yep. anywhere in the leg. And if it's sciatica, it means it goes down the sciatic nerve. So yep. in reality, what's irritating the sciatic nerve? It could be a lot of things. Yes. 
But what we see is the most common is going to be stemming from the low back, from yep. the spine, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. And so, as you mentioned, you know, postures and positions, so on and so forth, repetitive strain, right? When we see that, um, and but we also know we hear from a history that you know certain positions or movements can make it better or worse, mm -hmm. and it's back related. That can really clue in that hey, that leg pain is not a leg problem that's coming from the back. Yep. So because the most common version we see will um, uh, uh, zone on in that a little bit more. So, yeah. well, I think it's important to note that when it, when we think of sciatica, we think of that textbook definition where it's you know from the the back or the glute area all the way down the leg. It's important to note that you can have sciatica anywhere along the nerve. And what I mean by that is you can have isolated pain in mm -hmm. your leg, such as your calf, where you don't feel it along the whole nerve, but mm -hmm. you're still experiencing sciatica. Oh, for sure. Okay? I mean, how many times have we identified someone says, hey, I've got like leg pain here, but then they fail to mention until we ask a little bit more, like, hey, have you any previous back pain? Or we push on a little bit, like, ooh, yeah, oh. you know, I do have that. Now that you mentioned it. Yeah, yeah now that you mentioned those. it, exactly. Or a common presentation for sciatica that we see, I like to call this sciatica light, <laughs> where you just have pain maybe at the top of the hip back here and maybe into the glute or the outside of the hip. Yeah. Very, very common source from the low back. And what do patients commonly call, call that to us? Hip, hip pain, pain, hip pain, right? Hip pain. So hip pain is right, right in the crease of the yep. joint, right through here, yep. where if it's through the SI joint or the pelvis, that's still back pain until proven otherwise. Yep. And so how that happens is that we have all these nerve roots that come out through the spinal cord. You can see these little yellow um, cords here. They go all throughout the spine and they feed information to our muscles throughout the body and organs and so on and so forth. And so what we see from say sitting positions or bending or repetitive sprain and strain is that you can get a sort of um, an obstruction or a, a lack or dysfunctional movement in the low back joints. Mm -hmm. And then as a result, you can have some muscle guarding. Yep. And then that whole process can then cause some in neurogenic or some inflammation of the nerves or pinching. We don't know exactly because there can be many variations of this, but something is irritating the nerve where then this nerve is sort of like, um, I don't know, what do you say, a garden hose, right? Yeah, yeah. So imagine the garden hose, it feeds water from the source. So this nerve feeds information from your brain, the source, to the muscle, because muscles are dumb, they're meatheads. They're just meat. Literally. Right, they're meat. There's yes. no such thing as muscle memory, it just comes from the brain. It's brain memory that sends a signal to the muscle. Yeah, without a direct connection from the nervous system, your muscles wouldn't work at all. Exactly, they're right? They're just told what to do. Correct, they're just, yes. So, very subversive, sub, uh, subversive, subvert? Yeah. Subservient, they're very so, subservient. Well, and there's, that's a, another key point, there's no such thing as muscle memory. I just said that. Oh, okay, we'll cut that part. So if the hose or the nerve is kinked here mm -hmm. and there's a lack of information coming from the brain to the muscle because of a problem here, imagine if you kink a hose, right? And there's a lack of flow out of the hose, literally less water. Well, is there a water problem? Is there a hose problem? Not necessarily, it's the fact of what's done to the hose, right? right. So in these cases of you know, back-induced or posturally-induced uh, sciatica, there's, there's a kinked nerve here that is causing a lack of flow to the leg, thus causing some sort of symptoms, whether it's a lack of range of motion, yep. lack of strength, function, or some sort of funky Guard, pain, guarding, guarding numbness, some sort of pain tingling. down the leg. Yeah, yep. any sort of that stuff, right? Yep. So there's, there's, there's a lot of different things and a lot of variability, and that can be the difficult part about this. And that's why, um, you know, five things to fix back pain or fix sciatica is just, it's, it's shooting, fi or not shooting fish barrel. It's, it's like throwing crap at the wall hoping something sticks. Yep. And because we find in our personal experience, of course, that yep. uh, low back pain is extremely common and a low back pain induced sciatica we find is very common and is, very, and is most commonly found as a result of no reason, right? It just kind of happened, woke up with it, yep. or why I bent over and all of a sudden I started feeling it, exactly. um, or I really have no idea whatsoever. So um, we're gonna focus on the low back or lumbar induced sciatica and give you a couple tests to see, hey, one, can we start making this feel better? Better. And two, can you change it? Because if you can change it, that means we can use some either chiropractic, physical therapy, manual therapy, some sort of movement therapy to get you better overall, yep. where you don't need the expensive or um, you know risky procedures or, or God forbid surgery. Yeah, if you with the simple strategies we show you, if we can change your symptoms at all, whether better or worse. Uh, that means we know we can help you with some we, sort of Yes, we can influence therapy. it with movement. The first key strategy is to use lumbar support. So we, we love our McKenzie lumbar rolls. They go on your chair like this here and they support your low back, right? And so 
Mitch will move forward here. And if we don't have the support, go ahead and just sit down. Good. So sitting in this position, you can have all the intention in the world to sit up straight, but what happens is when you're working, your posture becomes a background process, just like your computer has background processes, it's in the background. Mm -hmm. And you tend to slouch forward, and then you're putting some repetitive strain in the back. Now, short term, it's fine, slouching's fine, but it's, mm -hmm. As you do it over and over and over again, eight hours a day, five days a week, it can start to catch up on you, right? And so it affects your entire posture and can cause neck pain as well. So by using a simple lumbar support, right in the small of the back, and you can rest his upper back against the backrest. Now, with this chair, we'd probably want to tilt it forward a little more. You're leaning back. Yes, true. But you'd want to rest your upper back against the backrest, the lumbar roll supporting the arch of your back. It's sort of like when you stand, go ahead and stand, you have that normal arch in your back. When we sit, we lose that. So by having the lumbar support, it helps hold you in that position, scoot back, helps hold you in that position without having to think about it too hard, mm -hmm. okay? Now, if you don't have a lumbar roll, what I'd try is roll up a bath towel. Pro tip. Yep, roll up a bath towel, maybe put some rubber bands around it, and place it in the same spot and lean back. Try that first, and if that works for you, then you can get rid of this, Yep. And get yourself a lumbar roll, which looks a little more normal than having a bath towel at work. Absolutely. Good, and it stays on your chair. Now that's some great postural support, but what we do recommend as well is every, probably half hour, but at very least hour, get up and just move around. Drink yep. some more water, it makes you go use the bathroom more often, hydration's important. Absolutely. Sit, stand, change positions, move around, we need more movement in our day. All right, now strategy number two, we're gonna do a little self-assessment and see if you can influence this stuff. So yep. well, we're gonna do a quick movement screen and then do a simple movement for you to test to see can you make a change with this. Yep. So we're gonna use a very simple movement screen. Do not worry, you do not have to wear black or gray or be opposites with your person you're working with. It's okay, so the first move we'll do, we'll do, let's do one, two, four, three moves. Yep. Well, kind of four. But first we're gonna do a toe touch. Let's go ahead and face that way, Doc. Reach for the toes. Good. And come back. If that's painful or not your normal, then keep note of that. Now we'll do a standing back bend. Good. We don't usually do this very often, but if you feel it hurts right away and you can't bend very far, probably a problem there. Yeah. Right? Whether you feel it in your back or down the leg anywhere. Mm -hmm. Next, we're going to do a glide or a side glide. So we're just going to go here. We're going to do a little shimmy from side to side. Good. If that feels stuck on one side versus the other, or it's painful anywhere in the back of the leg, hey, we've got a positive test. Yep. Lastly, we'll use a squat. So squat a couple times. Same thing, if that feels painful or a problem or weak, you painful on the way back up, yep. we know we've got a problem. So yep. those are your baseline tests. Any of those, of those that are positive, keep that, uh, write it down, and that's your baseline test or baseline tests. So what we'll start with then for uh, assessment purposes is see how can we influence this. So we'll use a Cobra press up or what's called extension and lying. So Mitch, let's go ahead and lie down. And what we'll do is kind of like a push up position, but we're just gonna press the upper body up, leaving the hips down on the ground. So go ahead and press up. Good. Now, Mitch can get full and free here, feels fine, but if you do this and you feel like you can't straighten your arms out because something hurts or you feel some pain in your back or your leg, you wanna stop there. Go up and just kiss the pain or touch the pain. Perform about 10 repetitions and just get an idea of how you're feeling. Now, if it's getting worse as you're doing this, go ahead and stop, we'll recheck your tests. Mm -hmm. If you can go higher, right, keep pushing it, go a little higher, but what you don't wanna do is force it. So go back down and then go ahead, Mitch, come up a little bit where, to where it hurts, say right there. Yep. And then go ahead and see, then show us what it would look like if you were to force it and how it would feel. Aww. Yeah, you don't wanna force it because you can inadvertently make things worse, right? Mm -hmm. But if you can get some change just by doing this, Good sign. Yep. Now let's pretend you do this and it actually eases up after say 10 reps, or maybe 10 reps is not enough. You do 20 reps, it starts to ease up a little bit. Let's recheck our baseline test. Let's come on up. We're gonna see if they're same, better, or worse. So we'll check our toe touch. We'll feel if it feels any better, if it feels any different, and can you move any better or worse? Mm -hmm. We'll check the back bend, see if it feels or moves any worse, or even if the pain has moved. Let's pretend you had leg pain and now you feel up in the, in the thigh. That's different, right? Mm -hmm. And then we'll do our glide from side to side. Good, and then our squat. Perfect. Now, if any one of these are different in some way, whether range of motion, strength, function, the pain has moved around, it's just different, yep. that's a really good sign that we can influence this overall.
Yeah, it's important to note that obviously we want you to feel better after these simple strategies, and that's what happens the majority of the time, but sometimes just doing these simple strategies can make you, make you feel worse. Don't hit the panic button. That actually tells us really good information mm -hmm. that we know there's a problem there and we know how to fix it. We just, now we know what your tolerance is to be able to yeah. have a good starting point. Yeah, as opposed to saying, hey, this is the one move is gonna fix your back pain. Yep. It's not guaranteed. So no. you could watch that video, make yourself worse, and then what do you do, right? So right. now if this does make you feel better and your tests are better, keep going with it, right? Yep. And see what happens, keep using that postural support. But otherwise, we'd recommend if you find some change here and this is not going away on its own and you're frustrated with this, right. a lot of variability, con if you're in the area, contact us or contact another certified McKenzie Method practitioner that can run you through this process to help you figure out the problem, but then also teach you strategies to maintain it that way. Yep. Keep it that way. Yeah. Absolutely. Anything awesome. else to add, Doc? No, my back feels amazing now. That doesn't. Yeah, Spence. <laughs>